Dining, as prescribed by the Buddha, is the assurance of cutting off the three evil paths and parting from the three realms. In 1995, Master Miao Xiang, along with Bhikkhu Xinkong, walked for more than two months traveling around 1,500 kilometers from Odaesan of Shanxi to Liaoning. With refraining themselves from touching money, only dining and resting in the open air, they gained practicable experience of dining regulations through the journey, such as asking for alms and having only one meal per day. On their way through Qinghuang Tao and Tahao Chuang, the local inhabitants were deeply impressed by the mendicant monks. After 10 years of doing so, the With time flying until nowadays, the monastic disciples still firmly uphold and practice the Buddha's teachings from the 3,000 years ago, not to assume where and what to dine during the wandering and alms round. A well-trained bhikkhu would never waste his precious cultivation for such meaningless scheme before the time of Alm's round. By neither clinging to the past nor worrying about the future, he concentrates on the mindfulness of walking meditation only, even on the way of asking for alms. It's difficult for ordinary people to imagine what it would taste like when mixing up all food collected from Alms Round. Why do Buddhas of the Three Periods and their monastic disciples must have such food for meal? Are there any special flavors which cannot be made even by sophisticated home cooking and dining with plates and chopsticks? Monks who practice Dutanga Take delight in food from Anus Round because there is a special flavor of purity. According to Buddhism doctrines, dining by asking for alms is superior to dining by delivery, which is also the personal experience of practitioners. 
The flavor of dining by asking for alms is likewise superior to dining in the monastery. Such perception is not only experienced within the mendicant monks. Some lay people also feel that there is difference between monastic meal and homemade meal. Even when homemade meal is offered to the monks, the flavor has been changed. Even in the secular world, the flavor of vegan meal is also superior to the non-vegan dishes. A vegetarian, having parted from those foul tastes, perceives the sweetness of vegetables, fruits and grains. Also makes the mouth and teeth clean and fragrant. With further ordination of rules of abstinence, the feeling will be even more pure. Abstinence does not simply refer to a vegan diet, but also includes the relative regulations of abstinence, like one meal per day, and so forth. Meal obtained by asking for alms, invitation, delivery, and cooking in the monastery have very deep insights, but asking for alms is the supreme. Asking for alms helps to gradually part from the obstinate habit of seeking pleasure of food, guides people who are lost in transmigration to break through the shackle of desire and attachment and reach the splendid land of ultimate bliss. The noble flavor of purity originates from not only asking for alms, but also dining as prescribed in the Dharma. Dining as prescribed in the Dharma is an important aspect of daily practice. First to choose location. After asking for alms, monks gather and dine together. Locations shall be chosen according to the circumstances. Open and quiet places like forests, valleys, river shoals. In a rainy day, a proper place can be under a bridge. Try not to sit on the grass. The places forbidden from asking for alms are likewise not allowed for dining. If it is impossible to avoid, then try to keep away as far as possible. A bhikkhu can ask for vegetables and fruits which are edible without cooked. Before dining, the process of purification has to be performed. The Buddha forbids bhikkhus from eating raw grasses, vegetables, fruits and seeds that possess ability of germination. Thus, before dining, the purification must be done to get rid of the possibility of germination. Bikus can neither plant nor destroy seeds of germination, nor cook for themselves so as to cut off the cost of living in the mundane world. Novices and lay people can perform purification under the guidance from Biku to avoid destroying the seeds of germination. Food could be purified by fire, knife, fingernail, dry, bird pecking, and scary. Fire purification can substitute all other methods, but other methods cannot replace fire. For food with ability of germination, the Sangha normally adopts the purification of fire, which refers to touching the foods that have been put together with an open flame. If the foods are separated, purification should be performed again. Wash the food with water three times afterwards. There is a set of rituals prior to dining to help the restraining of the mind. 
Opening refers to unfolding the napkin and wiping out the alms bowl. Then, place the bowl on the table for alms distribution. The measured vessel of the Daskam one, so blessed am I to lay out. May I, with all living beings, attain the emptiness of the three wheels. Ans ma moniswaha. When receiving food, bhikkhus should sit straight and place the cloth on their laps to prevent dripping of rice, soup and vegetables on the robes. When taking up the alms bowl, one should recite the verse. When seeing an empty alms bowl, may all living beings be ultimately pure, mindful from afflictions. When accepting food, silently recite the verse. When seeing a filled bowl, May all living beings completely possess the Dharma. When accepting food, press the rim of the bowl with right hand and hold its base with left hand.
Buddha prescribed that monks must bestow food before dining, otherwise they would be considered as the followers of demon. Reciting mantra and contemplation could transform the food into ambrosia all over the ten directions and satisfy all ghosts and spirits with the flavor of dharma. Through the five contemplations of dining, reflect the various stages that offered food goes through, such as planting, harvesting, grinding and cooking, and how difficult it is for donors to obtain it. If not to uphold precepts, meditate, recite sutra and perform duties related to the three jewels, how could we deserve to accept? If longing for fine food, despising low-quality food and ignoring average food without any perceptions, then these desires, angers and ignorance will be the cause of sufferings. To contemplate and cope as prescribed by the Buddha when accepting food will strengthen the right mindfulness. First spoon, all evils I vow to sever. Second spoon, all goods I vow to practice. Third spoon, all living beings I vow to get enlightened. Do not differentiate the status of the donors and the quality of food. Accepting food inequality could restrain the mind from delusions. The measured vessel is filled up with food of Dharma because of equality. Sramana should not dine in full luxury and comfort. It is not permitted to look around and check the quality and quantity of the food of the others, or discriminate the quality and flavor of the food. Food is the supplementary cause of the transmigration in the six paths. Living beings exist due to the existence of food and vice versa. Thus, non-discrimination on food will lead to the attainment of Buddhahood. Food should be distributed equally. The abbot, seniors, and the elders should dine together with assemblies, in equality, without discrimination. The monastery does not prepare a special meal for anyone, striking wooden board to convene the monks for dining. Prior to striking, the food belongs to the eternity that is not allowed to eat. After the striking and the food, is equally distributed, then it is allowable. Striking the wooden board is a way of convening monks. Although it is not required under some circumstances, it is compulsory before dining. Because the food is offered to the monks of ten directions, striking board must apply even if there is only one person to dine. Otherwise, it violates the precepts of stealing. After striking the wooden board, hit the fish-shaped wood block, then hit the cloud board afterwards. This is called the unsealing the wood block and releasing the board. Any object made of clay, wood, copper or iron, striking for convening the assemblies is called ganta. The fish-shaped wood block and the cloud board are both gantas. There used to be nine wood blocks struck and dining at seven different refectories in one monastery. In the daily practice, the six points of reverent unity are reflected.
it is very difficult to subdue our cravings for food. However, the strength of living and practicing in a harmonious community is also very powerful. The countless cycles of birth and death are the result of the dependence on food. The deeply rooted habitual greed accelerates the heartbeat when people face to and think about food. The habitual nature of being conquered and manipulated by the taste of food is deeply planted in the mind, which makes a failure of each attempt of detaching from it. If there was no such experience of Tutanga practice under all conditions, practitioners would not apprehend its true nature. The concentration acquired through wandering makes mind even purer and would surely subdue the heavy joke of greed to clarify who the real master is. Journeying in the autumn rain with a heavy backpack. If the six organs are indulged to capture the externals, they would be inevitably drawn in the habitual reaction. Cold, damp, exhaustion and hunger are followed by depression and tiredness. If the six organs could be well protected, all this comfort would fade away as concentration strengthens. At noon, it is merely the time for the lesson of dining again. If encountering undesirable conditions during wandering, dining in a seated position and other positions of walking, standing and lying down are allowable as prescribed by the Buddha. However, once a position is changed, Dining cannot be continued, but finished. Otherwise, it is a violation to the one sitting practice. Rain is not one of the undesirable conditions. Thus, there is no need to walk or stand when dining in the rain. Since there is no archway of a bridge nearby, monks put on the robes and the raincoats sit in sequence. This is the rain dust that does not require acceptance of alms before dining. The one sitting practice is prescribed by the Buddha for bhikkhus. Only dining in one sitting means that nothing can be eaten except medicine if standing up from the seat. When dining collectively, the table behavior of one's neighboring monks is critical to the practice of one's sitter's practice. Bhikkhus dine neither with lay females or bhikkhunis, nor with people drinking alcohol or not vegan. When seeing masters or elders during the dining, it is not compulsory to stand up and salute. Proper serving of food is also critical. When there are no lay attendants to serve food, novices may take over and serve the food. Dining with one sitting and also dining with one alms bowl only. During the wandering, bhikkhu should not bring any other food container than alms bowl, for they are unnecessary. Bhikkhus are allowed to heat food with other utensils, but cannot dine with any other containers except alms bowl. Drinking packaged beverages directly is improper as well. Some bhikkhus do not eat stuffing food that has a shape that looks like utensil. Do not call steam stuffing bun by hand, but cut it to pieces in the alms bowl before eating. The path of purification identifies dining with one alms bowl only, a 
as one of the 13 Tutanga practices for eliminating craving to different flavors and reducing discrimination. If following one sitting practice as prescribed by the Buddha, four dhyana heavens, four formless dhyana concentrations, even various supernatural powers and liberation will be attained. Otherwise, such virtuous merits could not be attained. During walking meditation, go straight forward, even if there are mud and water puddles on the way ahead. During alms round, ask for alms in sequence, regardless of whether the donor is poor or rich. Practice the mind of straightness under all such conditions, even when dining. Asking for alms in sequence is one of the Dutanga practices. Dining should also be performed in sequence, which refers to starting from the nearest food. The same manner also applies to having fruits starting from the nearest to the farthest in a horizontal order. According to the sequence of the layout of the food, it is not proper to dine in a vertical order, from left to right or from right to left. The proper method is to dine in a horizontal order, from the nearest to the farthest. It is proper to hold out the alms bowl for food when dining, but it is not necessary if no more food is needed. Gesticulate by hand or a spoon to indicate that only half a mouth is needed after showing a rejecting gesture by hand or in word, all the food served later cannot be accepted. Dining is similar to asking for alms, accepting whatever is offered. It is improper to wait for the next course in order to combine with the food at hand and vice versa, because the thought of waiting is a representation of greed. The food that is not served or in short supply is the retribution of karma sometimes, or as a result of restraining the mind. Dining in sequence, do not choose, pick out or mix food. Eat whatever food that the spoon has touched. Restrain the eyesight and concentrate on the alms bowl only. Not focus on the entire food, but the nearest part. Do not discriminate whether it is spicy, salty, hot and hard, or there is anything to eat or not. Extinguish thoughts immediately as soon as they arise, because by not following them, the generation and transmigration will be avoided. If thoughts are not restrained, actions will be developed continuously and the delusions will become solid. We need great courage to defeat delusion and the Dharma concentration can be nourished only by doing this. To dine, to walk, to face everything with mindfulness, to eliminate the distracting thoughts and obstacles with mindfulness. True purity exists only with mindfulness. Whether the food is sour, sweet, bitter or spicy, they all have power to heal. Dining as prescribed by the Buddha will help to enter into Dharma concentration and attain the true nature of void. For people who are willing to renounce home, do not start with describing the joy of monastic life. 
but indicate that having only one meal per day, resting only under trees, sleeping only during the midnight, being abstinent with food and sleep, and practicing diligently. Ask whether all the above could be upheld. Every answer has to be positive before becoming a monk. Having only one meal per day refers to dining only once during period of dawn and midday. There is no other time for taking food. Patients and youngers are allowed to have a light meal as medicine in the morning, which should also abide by the rules of not dining out of prescribed time or after midday. Due to the cause of illness, it is allowed to take liquid, digestive medicine and lifetime medicine. The Buddha said, the celestial beings dine in the morning, Buddhas dine prior to midday, animals dine in the afternoon, ghosts and spirits dine after sunset. Sentient beings falling into the realm of ghosts always suffer the pain of hunger and thirst since they were too mean and greedy to do any charity in their past lives. When hearing the noises made by this wear and dining, their throats are burned by the fire of hunger, which causes extreme agony. Because of the sympathy to the suffering of hunger ghosts, monks should quietly dine at noon. When it's time for arms round, monks put down their backpacks, don their robes, and with alms bowl in hands, and get ready for alms, practicing alms round constantly so as to uphold regulations of dining with solemnity and honor. A bhikkhu practicing Dutanga concentrates on his inner cultivation. On the way of wandering, he should keep mindfulness on every single movement and posture. Obtaining food only by arms round could sever the subtle cravings for food. Fine dining, which is the origin of sufferings, could only nourish body and flatter the appetite, but any craving of it will damage the dignity of practitioners who seek the end of sufferings. Dining is just the rough delusion of living beings Having one meal a day only could avoid being sleepy and rosy caused by overeating. Even to have a fast for a few days and live on mindfulness and joy of meditation. There are some arahants who ask for alms every seven days. Tutanga practices of constantly asking for alms and having only one meal per day are the duties of a sramana, and also the only way to deepen cultivation. The noble sramana still practice alms round at the doors of living beings so as to plant the field of merits for all beings, and also leave footprints for the future disciples to follow. <laughs> Mifa 啊,那自己不不不做菜。To learn from the sages, having only one meal per day is compulsory. Practitioners will not eat badly because of having one meal per day. On the contrary, it could inspire pure food and sincere offerings from lay people. Alms round will perfect the fast, ultimately. 
Not dining out of regulated time is not a minor precept, but an important precept critical to the attainment of Buddhahood. It is a precept prescribed by the Buddha without any exception. From the eight precepts of lay disciples to the ten precepts of novices and precepts of Siksamana, even the precepts of Bhikkhu and Bhikkhuni, this clause is included in all of them. It is thus obvious that this clause is so important among all precepts. Only novice and bhikkhu practicing this precept thoroughly could ordain lay people the eight precepts. If exceptions are always applied without any control, people will be manipulated by the deeply rooted habits of transmigration. It is preferable to eat only 80% full. Overeating causes mental lethargy and craving. If there is excessive food, do not eat up all, but follow the Sutra's teaching and offer it to the hungry beings. Except plain water, any fruit juices, beverages, and tea are not allowed after midday, but only can be taken during the meal. The time of midday varies due to different locations and seasons. Thus, it should be subject to local time. Bhikkhus do not indulge in drinking all sorts of fruit juices and syrups after midday for practicing the good dharma with concentration. Sramana is exemplar of human and celestial beings. Living beings can be edified by his outward deportment. It is the expression of inner purity which can also inversely purify the mind. Ceasing evils and preventing faults will correspond to the self-nature gradually. The deportment of monks can edify living beings it is not only a matter of appearance, but also the extent of restraining mind. During the meal, proper deportment, as prescribed, can help to restrain mind more purely. Do not make noise when dining. Do not suck noodles, lick food with tongue, or scrape the alms bowl with hands. Avoid making loud noise when coughing, covering mouth with sleeve when spitting, and picking teeth. Do not speak with food in the mouth, laugh or gossip about, or make chewing noise. Avoid the clank between bowl and spoon. If hungry ghosts hear the noise, their throats will be on fire, causing extreme agony. Make gesture if necessary but not yell or look around, because that will interrupt mindfulness and distract others' minds. If grains are mixed in the food, it can be eaten after removing the husk. If there are a lot, collect them and offer to the birds, but not throw away. Do not scratch head and face to prevent flakes from falling down. If there are insects or other objects, Cover them in secret to avoid suspicion from next monks. Hold the alms bowl not too high or too low, but in front of the chest. It should be held by hand, neither put on the table nor on the knees. If the food is not served yet, it is the right time to recite the five contemplations in the mind. Dining too fast will blemish the deportment or distract others if too slow. It is proper to dine at the same pace with the assemblies.
Alms bowl should be washed after meal. When dining is over, the assemblies wait quietly. Water is distributed for washing alms bowls when the inverted bell rings. A spoon of water could be drunk for rinsing the mouth before washing the alms bowl. After washing, the water does not belong to anyone and should be offered to the hungry beings. May the water of washing alms bowls resemble the taste of heavenly ambrosia bestowed to all ghosts and spirits. May they all be satisfied with Anmos Yulas Ishohe. It is not proper to pour the washing water on dirty ground or in the sewage. It should not be dumped surrounding the donor's house either. The water should be cooled down first to avoid harming insects and then sprinkle it at an empty spot as offering to the ghosts and spirits. After the assemblies wash alms bowls, the inverted bell rings again. It manifests that the dining is over and any food cannot be eaten anymore. The food in the throat can be swallowed. The remains in the mouth and between teeth should not be swallowed but clean with a tissue. Standing up or not willing to eat anymore can also be considered as dining over even before the inverted bell rings. After attaining the third fruition of the Hinayana and becoming an Anagamin, the laity has already completely eliminated contacts with money, but he cannot be called the one worthy of offering because he still reserves food overnight. After becoming an Arahant, he has two choices, to become a monk before midnight of that day and live on Alps Round, 
or to enter into nirvana.